Hello, back here at the more jig bore. I guess this is going to be the third installment here. Got my little dog barking outside. I'll probably have to intervene. Chloe, knock it off. Get in here. <laughs> well, in the last installment, I dropped my tool. So I have to make sure that it's nice and sharp. Now, this is one of the most critical things with the jig boring tool is to have a razor sharp tool and a predictable edge. Now, I'm going to show you about aligning the tool in the machine. And this is a critical part on using a jig bore because you may have to remove the tool to sharpen it and you want to get it back, okay? Otherwise, if you don't get it back in straight, the dial on the boring head's not going to be as accurate as you want it to be. So, I'm going to make sure that this tool is just so nice. I got just a very, very small radius here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the finest feet of the machine. Okay, and I'll talk about that a little bit as we go. Let's move in a little bit closer. And make sure you can see. Now, I, I got the, uh, in the last uh, episode, I got, the, I got the work square, okay? Now, I'm going to probably have to take the camera loose. But I've got uh, the boring head in there. And you've got to take and get the head square. So the, the head feeds this way, and so the edge will be back, pointing towards the back. But for convenience sake, we're going to have the edge pointing to the front to align it. So we'll rotate the dial to the back, okay? Now, and notice there's flats on the side of this head, okay? Flats. Dial to the back. I'm gonna put a square across the vertical ways and align the head flat to that, okay? Ah, best you can. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to get the tool in it, and since the dial's to the back, the point will be to the front. Okay. Let's get that up in there. I'll have to check this uh, for square again. Just, you want to make sure you don't uh, get anything too much out of whack. See if I can get that up in there. There we go. Get it somewhat true. There we go. Now I'm going to bring it down. And, okay, I'm going to have to take the camera loose to show you this. Um, jig bar works very difficult to show, I think. Okay, now remember when I uh, aligned this hole, I centered it. And then I moved the y-axis and put a little drill dimple mark right there, okay? So, if you bring the tool down to that dimple. You see, I just stuck it in by eye real quick, and the edge is quite a bit ahead of that dimple. Okay? So the tool's going to have to be turned back, and I'll loosen it. Okay, it's loose. And I'm going to just rotate that tool right to the center of that dot. Can you see it? It's right there, right in the center. And that's pretty good. And sometimes I just bump it a little bit ahead. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the head stays square, okay? Let's get that over there. It did. It looks okay. Okay, now at that point, I'm going to carefully get that Allen wrench in there and snug that tool in. And I think we're good. I'm going to check it again. You really have to be, you know, 
thorough using this machine. I mean, this is the most accurate uh, mill, mill type machine for boring and stuff. This is it. So yeah, see I'm on the dot. I'm square. That tool is centered. See that? Okay, so I can bring the uh, Bring it all back to zero here, and that'll center us with the hole. Hmm, let's go a little too far either way, a hundred times. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and just start snugging these down. Uh, you'll notice that the, the x-axis drift uh, a couple tenths there. And that's normal. That's from oil. Oil settling on the ways. Yeah, it doesn't have to, this doesn't really have to be that accurate, but I want to get it on zero. There we go. Lock that. Non-influencing locks. Okay, so here we are. We are centered. See that? Okay. So, we'll get back up here. I'll get you back. And I'm just going to skim the edge of that. Find out where we are. I'm going to advance that head a little bit forward. It's not going to be very much. Oh, yeah, I'm already just cutting into it right there. So I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to lift it up all the way. And uh, let's feed it in, oh, about 10 thousandths. Uh, maybe, maybe fit about 14 or 15. I'll put it right on the 10. Now there's a veneer on here for tents. And that's one of the reasons when it, you, why you want to keep the tool on center. So if I dull the tool, I can still come back to this reference mark, sharpen the tool, spin the head around, and get the tool back in. And uh, you'll find out how important that is uh, as you use this type of machine, you know, to be able to get the bar back in. Okay. So I'm going to lower the head here. Right about there. I'm going to put it in the lowest feed, which is about eight ten thousandths. I have to get it going. Okay. Now I'm going to get the uh, lube here. And uh, where did I see a brush? I did see one on the floor. Here's one. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of that wax lube in that hole. Okay. A lot of lube in there. Got a lot of aluminum in there. <laughs> okay, a lot of lube in there. Okay. Let's fire it up and I'll, pun and I'll punch this hole and we'll have a look at it. Okay, we are in gear. See how it's running? Running about 1200 RPM. And I'm going to go ahead and make a cut at that um, and see what happens. I'll put it in the lowest gear here. Bring it down. Tighten the clutch on the wheel. Let's see what happens. Maybe I can break the toe, huh? It's a little under an inch hole. I don't know, seven eighths or something. I think the finish is looking pretty good. We'll have a look at that.
there. We're there. This is a break up here. Okay, I'm pulling out of the hole there. Let's have a look at that. Oh, it, uh, if you look at the earlier video, I think you can see the uh, uh, difference. I'll take this off. Oh, I got to tooth this one here. Okay. Now there's two uh, types of metal here. I don't know if you can see that on that hole very well. I think I have a flashlight. Maybe that will help if I don't get it too close. See, there's two types of alloy. Uh, this on top is a piece I think of like uh, more mild. I don't know what those things drive me crazy. Now it's going to do uh, SOS. 